My guest was a popular child Hollywood actor that was stabbed nine times. One wound plunged deep into his heart. He died and was suddenly in the presence of God and was told he could return to earth if, if he would do two things. Next. Now our most important guest is the Holy Spirit. Yes. And you are so welcome here, Spirit of the living God. Yes. I ask you to show Jesus off on this show. My guest, Todd Coconato, became a child Hollywood actor at eight. Todd, unmask Hollywood. You saw it from the inside out. We see uh, the glitz and glamour, and we think it's really something special. And young kids, they want to get on the stage. Yes. Unmask Hollywood for me. There's, there's a lot to unmask, but I'll tell you some things that I, I witnessed there. You know, so first of all, young people that come there, you come really innocent. Like you said, uh, this is success uh, according to the world. You know, you go in there and you realize it's not at all what it appears from the outside. There's uh, a lot of sexualization of young people. Uh, there's molestations that go on. There's all types of dark things that happen. Uh, but I, I witnessed all of that. I really feel like the Lord protected me, but he allowed me to see the playbook of the enemy. He allowed me to see what was going on under the covers in Hollywood. And I'll tell you, I've had the media write stories about me about a bunch of different things, but they never say anything about my experience in Hollywood because they know I lived it and I'm telling the truth about it. Uh, tell me about drugs in Hollywood. You, did yeah. you get into drugs? I did. So it's, it's almost like part of the lifestyle. In fact, you're very fortunate not to get pulled into that. But, you know, when you hang out with the other young celebrities, you become a part of this culture, a part of this Hollywood community, this young Hollywood community. You go to clubs. You're underage, but you're in clubs. You know, somehow they let you in. You know, it's a whole lifestyle. And one of the things that's in that lifestyle is drug addiction and addictions of all kinds. But designer drugs and alcoholism and these things are introduced at a really young age. Now, your parents had a rocky relationship, uh, especially when your mom became a believer. Oh, yeah. It's almost hard to believe, but tell me about the car incident. Yeah, so in the middle of this whole thing, while I'm out there in Hollywood as an actor, my mom gets saved, and she accepts Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And my dad was uh, from New York. He's from the Bronx. He's a macho Italiano, you know. And uh, he said, you're not going to that church. And so he would literally stand in front of the car and block it. And I remember this as a young, you know, young boy just watching my dad and kind of being scared you know, to be quite honest, but I, I knew there was a spiritual element to it. I knew something else was going on. Why would he not want us to go? Because when I would go to the church, I'd feel peace and love and the Holy Spirit. So we knew that we were in the middle of a battle in our family. Well, at 21, great miracle happened. Your parents became believers. Yes. And they invite you, <laughs> you, yeah. to a pastor's conference. <laughs> Why did you even go? So, you know, my dad had come along at this point. He accepted the Lord. My parents invited me to this pastor's conference in Honolulu and, uh, you know, this is out in Hawaii. And I only went, Sid, because it was a free trip to Hawaii and they kind of bribed me, right? And so, you know, we'll <laughs> give you a free one. trip. All you got to do is go to one meeting, you know? So I go to this one meeting, you know, and I was just thinking I'm going to stay on the beach and hang out the whole time. The glory of the Lord fell in this meeting, and I can't explain it. I, I felt like I was going to get struck by lightning, first of all, going into this church as this dirty Hollywood <laughs> sinner, you know. But here I am. I go in there, and the glory of the Lord falls upon me. And I honestly, I don't know if you ever felt like this, but I couldn't even breathe. I had to get up from my seat, and I walk out in this beautiful Descanso garden. And this was the first moment when I really feel like I gave my heart to the Lord and something had changed in me and I'll never forget that moment. It was like a beam of light was shining on me. I mean, it's really amazing how the Lord met me there. And on this trip in Hawaii, it was such a redemptive trip. The Lord allowed me to walk on the beach there in Honolulu and there was restoration with my father and I and there was forgiveness. And I'm telling you, there was things in the house. I mean, I used to get hit pretty hard. I mean, there was things that, you know, were pretty serious that I had to forgive and he had to forgive. But we, we had a redemptive talk and the Lord healed our relationship and it's been healed ever since. But two years later, after that amazing encounter, Todd was stabbed nine times died and told he could stay in heaven or return to earth, depending on how he answered God's two amazing questions. Be right back. 
Todd, two years later, after that life-changing experience in Hawaii, what happened to you? Yeah, so this is wild. You know, I, when I was in the world, this didn't happen. This happens after I accept Christ. And so I'm two years in. I'm having a hard time finding Christian friends. I'm kind of getting accustomed to my new life. And this is a, a way different life than I had lived previously as a child actor. And so, you know, it was hard for me sometimes to find friends. And so I was going to see one of my old friends in this apartment complex in Granada Hills, California. I had just left the gym. I used to work out religiously at that time as part of being in the whole Hollywood crowd. And so I'm walking in this apartment complex and this man flings the door open of this apartment and comes out with a kitchen knife at least this big it must have been super sharp because he proceeded to stab me nine times and the first stab was in my heart so you know, I, I'm so shocked by what had happened. I'm trying to fight him off. And every time I would go like this or that, I would get slashed. So I have stab wounds all over my body. Uh, and, and so this was crazy. And then when I'm on the ground and I'm bleeding, and I'm, I'm literally dying there on the ground. I look up at the guy and I pull up my sweatshirt and I say, I'm dying, you know? And, and at something happened where he, he all of a sudden realized he was about to murder me and he picked me up and he put me in my own car and drove my car with his girlfriend. I'm in the back seat bleeding out on the way to the hospital. And, and this man is driving me, so I'm looking, and all of a sudden I could see like a tunnel vision. And so the, the last things that I were seeing in that moment was this girl in the front and this guy in the front, and I go into the presence of the Lord. And it was the most uh, amazing experience I can ever explain. I, it was a white presence. I knew the glory was there. And I often read Isaiah chapter 6 where he says, I saw the Lord seated on the throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. And the only thing that he could respond with after that whole thing is send me, I'll go, right? And that was my send me, I'll go moment because I'm in the glory of the Lord and I hear the Lord say to me, do you want to live or do you want to die? And I said, well, Lord, I want to live. I, you know, I feel like I haven't lived out my life. I want to have a family and kids someday. He says, if you live, he says, you've got to tell everybody that I'm real. And he says, and you have to be on fire for me for the rest of your life. You've got to stay on fire. And so right when I said, yes, Lord, that was like me saying, send me, I'll go. I wake up and I'm in this hospital bed and people are looking at me and everybody's looking at me. You should not be alive. And I knew that the Lord had spared my life at that moment. It was unbelievable what God did. They said somebody had just been in here. They were stabbed two times and they died. You were stabbed nine times, one in the heart. You lost all this blood, but yet you're still alive. So there's a purpose and a destiny for your life. And did you know there's a purpose and a destiny for your life? Yes. Yes. Just as with Todd. And the purpose is high for Todd's life. And the purpose is high for your life. That's why the price was paid, a high price. Jesus died for your sins. At this moment, the presence of God is here, same presence that was on Todd. At this moment, mm -hmm. I want you to have your own experiential knowledge of God. Say this prayer out loud with me and believe it to the best of your ability. Out loud, dear God, dear God. I'm a sinner. And I'm so sorry. I believe Jesus died for my sins. And I am clean. This is the first day of the rest of my life. I ask you, Jesus, to come and live inside of me and be my Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, Todd, a month later, you're back in secular work. You're working yeah. in an apartment store, I think. Yes. And, okay. and uh, uh, the miracle occurred, but, but you're bitter. Why? Bitterness started taking root in my heart, and I'll tell you why. I was a you know, Hollywood actor. It was all about looks, and you know, that was a big part of it. Here I am now. I got all these you know, keloid scars all over my body. I would look in the mirror, and I would be like, look at me now. You know, I look awful. And so I started getting mad at God. I was like, you know what? I, I was living in the world. I started glamorizing my past, which a lot of us tend to do, you know, and started forgetting what God had done. And instead, I was mad at God. Like, why when I'm a Christian, I'm trying to do everything right, and, and now this happens, you know? And so here's the wild thing. So I'm sitting. I go 
go back to my job. And this woman comes down from the third floor and she says, I saw your face and the Lord gave me a word for you. Now, this isn't a department store, this isn't a church, you know? So I'm like, okay, what's the word, you know? So she goes, don't let bitterness grow root in your heart. She says, the Lord has a plan for your life. He's going to use you. You're going to soar with win wings of eagles. You're going to run and not grow weary. And so she starts prophesying over me. So honestly, Sid, as, as powerful as that is, I wasn't convinced yet. I thought maybe my mom put her up to it. I, I didn't know. You know, something was going on, but you know, it, it couldn't have been that she just saw my face and came down, right? So the, the very next day, I'm out at a coffee shop in Sherman Oaks, California, and I'm sitting there minding my own business, you know, and, and all of a sudden, uh, the, somebody who was at another table turns around and they said, I have a word for you. Okay, again, I'm not at a church, I'm at a coffee shop. I'm not even kidding you, it almost verbatim with the first word, do not grow you know, weary in doing good, don't let bitterness grow root in your heart, you're gonna soar with wings of eagles, you know, key words, the same as the prophecy. So now I'm like, okay, this is, this is weird. What's going on, you know? And so uh, I really started getting a little bit scared. So then a couple of days later, I'm at a gym in Northridge, California. And I was really trying so hard to get back in the gym. I really wasn't ready, but I'm doing very lightweight, you know, reps and everything. And this man with, you know, really buff guy with a bunch of tattoos turns around and guess what he says? Don't let bitterness go ruin your heart. The Lord is with you. I'm like, this is unbelievable. So now are you convinced? I'm convinced. And sometimes I got a real thick head, let me tell you. So anyway, I go out into the parking lot at that 24 hour fitness and I just start weeping and calling upon the name of the Lord. And it was amazing what God did right there. I just, I knew that that was my moment. You know, that, that's it. I'm never turning back. You know, clearly God has a call on my life. I don't really know, you know, pastor, evangelist, like the last thing that I would ever think that I would be doing. Doing, uh, but God always has different plans, so I enrolled in Bible college. Okay, fast forward, rolls, goes to Bible college, and friends from Hollywood hear about him and start calling him. And he actually starts a, a congregation for Hollywood celebrities that want to know more about Jesus. And he saw everything under the sun, and he helped these people in every area of, of, of their life. But then God spoke to you, and God said, you know Satan's playbook. Yes. What is a playbook? Yeah. So you think about it like a sports team, you know, I mean, imagine if you had all the plays of the other team. I mean, you would win because, you know, you have an advantage. God gave me this advantage by allowing me to see what was going on in Hollywood, by allowing me to see what the misfits, the prodigals, this generation has had to deal with and, and how they think that, the, you know, drugs are going to fill the void or this, you know, promiscuity is going to fill the void when ultimately the only real void filler is Jesus. And he's given us all of the ways that we can win if we apply the strategies. And so that's what we're doing is we're literally putting together all the different plays that the enemy tries on all of us and showing how every time we we can have complete victory in Jesus Christ. Now, you've been teaching this for a while. Are yes, you seeing this is what happens to these Hollywood people that come in, they're addicted in drugs, yes. sex, pornography, yes. uh, all sorts of illegal activities. Uh, when, when they get mentored and discipled and be informed, of what the devil's going to do before he's going to do it, what happens? That's right. They come to be in a totally new life and understand that the things that were important to them before are actually not what God had intended for their life. And so he pulls them out of a world of wickedness, just like he did with me, and, and puts them on the path to success and ultimate success, not only here on earth, but also eternally. And so this is the most powerful thing. We've seen it over and over again to somebody that says yes to the call and actually receives the word of the Lord. And we watch their life year after year and how the Lord blesses, expands the territory, and it's like night and day from where they were. We can win every battle if we know Satan's playbook. Even spirit-filled believers are being deceived and missing their God-given appointments, their God-given destiny. Be right back. We will be right back to 
Call now and get Todd Coconato's brand new five-part audio CD teaching set, Exposing Satan's Playbook, Win Every Battle, and his special bonus card. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9821. Did you know that in sports, if a football team has the opposing team's playbook, they would be able to win every game. It is now possible to obtain possession of Satan's playbook. Satan's been doing the same thing since day one in the Garden of Eden, so he runs the same plays, but we need to know his playbook. You will receive Todd Coconato's anointed five-part audio CD teaching set, Exposing Satan's Playbook, Win Every Battle. Through Todd's brand new exclusive five-part audio CD teaching set, you will understand that there are times we as believers still fall for Satan's lies, deceptions, plans, plots, and schemes. Discover how Satan uses fear, doubt, lust, envy, jealousy, worry, and many other forms of sin to attempt to take us down. Learn how to overcome financial issues, sickness, marriage issues, prodigal children, oppression, depression, and so much more. Discover 10 ways you can safeguard your home from the attacks of the enemy. Learn how to avoid the enemy's assignments and walk in complete victory. Todd includes anointed and powerful prayers, encouragement, and words of knowledge throughout this series. You will also receive Todd Coconato's special bonus card, Exposing Satan's Playbook. Wherever you go, you can take this card with you. It exposes several of the enemy's different strategies and Todd's divine list of the strategies from heaven to walk in victory over demonic strongholds. It's your time to reverse the table and use Satan's strategy against him. Don't miss out on getting Todd Coconato's anointed five-part audio CD teaching set, Exposing Satan's Playbook, Win Every Battle, and his special bonus card. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. You can't get this anywhere else. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9821. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9821 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, I asked Todd to put together, just for our ministry, CD teachings on Satan's playbook. Uh, you can only share a couple. Yep. Share a couple of things that you have seen over and over again. Nothing new under the sun That's for right. Satan, but he That's keeps right. faking people out. That's Tell right. us a few things. That's right. He uses fears. He uses doubt. He uses words that people have spoke over your life that hook in, and then you end up developing that as your identity instead of who Christ made you to be. Um, so, you know, he uses the same types of plays on the people of God even, you know, where they can be discouraged, depressed, down, feel the oppression. A lot of people are dealing with this right now, Sid, and so we have the answer how to not only have a victory in that, but, but be able to heal other people from those same things. Well, give me a few examples. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, there's a gentleman that I know that was afflicted uh, from something that somebody had said when he was younger, and he took that on as his identity, and he's, you know, they said, you're never going to succeed. You're never going to get past this. And so, for years, he was just walking around with this baggage, and when we shared with him what the Lord made him fearfully and wonderfully, for a time as this, took his time on him. You know, we started sharing how the enemy was lying to him, and he started looking into his identity in Jesus Christ, who God made him to be. All this sudden he started realizing those words were lies from the pit of hell. And we started casting down those words and that fear and that doubt and those things that were spoke over him. And all of a sudden this man is, is totally successful now, only a few years out. He's got a new business. He's got a new relationship. I mean, his whole life is turned around. The enemy, he's not going to come at your front door and be like, you know, no, here I am in the devil suit. Okay. Because we'd all be like, oh yeah, that's the devil. Right? So what he does is he'll look at what you long gaze at, what you stare at. He, you know, he's not in our mind, but he's able to to see what we're doing when others can't see, you know, and so he can see if there's one, an open door in your life, an area of sin, uh, any of those things. And so he'll use whatever open door or, you know, and he'll slowly, he's not going to just do it all at once, but slowly a little bit more, a little bit more. And, and as we're willing to compromise a little bit more, a little bit more, we open ourselves up to a big attack. And that's where the enemy goes to try to destroy us. Uh, you recently spoke at a spirit filled universe oh, yeah. and you were 
shocked yeah. what happened. Yeah. So, you know, this is a, a university that are raising up pastors and preachers and evangelists. And so, you know, and I speak a lot at, at college campuses, uh, but the Holy Spirit came during the altar time and, and, and spoke the word doubt. And so I just asked, I said, is anybody in here struggling with doubt? Now, again, this is upcoming evangelists, preachers. About half the place said, raise their hand. And we, the entire night became mm -hmm. about get, setting people free of doubt and fear. And, and so there's a, there's a, the enemy is using fear and doubt and all different types of devices, whether it's the media, whether it's movies, whether it's streaming platforms, all these different things to, to disseminate false information. I call it the modern day prophets of Baal. And that's literally what's happening. And so we have to, as believers, have to understand the reality is what Christ said in the Word of God. The reality is, is that Jesus. Christ is Lord of all. The reality is that the Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if we apply these principles and we walk this out in the spirit of living God, we are overcomers. The Bible says that occupy until He comes. He says He's with us even until the end of the age. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. So we start understanding that we have the authority to trample on scorpions and devils. We have the authority to cast out and to drive out and to walk into the room and to change the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, you know, when Todd teaches on these areas, uh, the teaching is, is about Satan's playbook. You have to understand, cancers can't stand when they're exposed. Marriages on the brink of divorce are transformed. Hollywood people are transformed. Last year you had an angelic encounter. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, you know, so since my stabbing, that was the you know, last time I was in the presence of the Lord like that, you know, and so um, I haven't had too many angelic encounters over the years. I've had dreams, different things, but I was sleeping in my bed in August of last year, and all of a sudden there was a messenger angel that came and visited me, and it was, you know, as in the Bible says, the first thing, you're paralyzed with fear, you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then I realized it's holy, it's of the Lord, it's not demonic or anything like that, so then I had a peace come on me, and there was just two things that this messenger angel said, it said, come out from among them and be consecrated. Now, Sid, I'm a pastor, I'm an evangelist. I started, you know, thinking about this. I'm like, I am consecrated, I think. I mean, you know, is there an area that I'm not consecrated? I started really looking. I started thinking about this for the next couple of months. And what I really believe the Lord is doing, is He's getting His bride, the ecclesia, the church ready to come out from among them. We have to come out of Babylon, the system. We have to come out of the lies of this era, of this age, and then the deceptions. And that's what's happening is a lot of people are walking around in fear and deception and not understanding who we are in Jesus Christ. And so I really believe that's the message, you know, come out from among them. Be, be, a, be a citizen of heaven. You know, understand that we're able to do what Jesus did and even greater things in this hour. And, and it's that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that we're able to walk in that authority and anointing. Now, you have an anointing to break off the spirit of doubt. Do that right now, and we just have a, a couple minutes left. Okay. Yeah, and, I want... And pray for whatever God shows you. Thank you, Sid, and thank you. The Holy Spirit is here right now. We feel the anointing, and I just felt the Lord telling me that there are people that are watching, and you You've seen pastors and you've seen the church and maybe you were like me and you thought I'm too dirty to go in there or you know they'll never accept me but this is a relationship with the God of heaven and earth it's not about what man thinks it's about what God thinks and so if he can save a wretch like me I was an actor messed up in Hollywood on drugs living a promiscuous lifestyle God got a hold of my life and I'm telling you I was in the presence of the Lord I saw the glory of the Lord and my job is to tell you he's real and he wants to encounter you today just like he did with me when I was in that Honolulu Convention Center. And so God is calling the misfits. He's calling the prodigals. He's calling people in this hour. Look, pastors are not perfect. I'm going to tell you that right now. Christians are not perfect. But what we are is we're saved and we're set free and we're healed and delivered by the power and the glory of the Holy Spirit of the living God. And what he's done in my life, he wants to do in your life. So let's, let's break off the doubt, the fear. So Lord, in Jesus name, I just thank you right now that anybody that's watching right now that has doubt, Lord, obviously this is something that you've identified that's happening in the body of Christ. It's happening in ministry. It's happening with people of God. But Lord, let us know that you are real. This is the reality. You are the King of glory, Lord God. And all authority in heaven and earth is yours, Lord. So let us not have that doubt or that fear, but let us rise up, Lord God, in this time and be the head and not the tail. Be the church and be the people of God that we're meant to do to take back this territory and to take back this nation for the King of Kings and the Lord. Lord of Lords, in Jesus' name, amen. God is saying to you, be ye holy, for I am holy.